Comet 12P Ponds Brooks brightens, the Quadrantids meteor shower peaks, and we explore the constellation Orion. Let's kick off the new year by taking a look at the incredible things that you can go out to see and image in our night sky for January of 2024. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. Happy New Year and welcome to your guide to the heavens above. Whether you just got a new telescope for the holidays or you're a stargazer with years of experience, there'll be something in this video for you to go out to see and enjoy. Let's begin the month of January with an event that requires absolutely no equipment to go out and see, and it's the Quadrantids meteor shower. The Quadrantids will peak on the night of January 3rd into the morning of January 4th. To see them, go outside around midnight and look towards the northeast, where you will see the Big Dipper. Just below it, the Quadrantids will streak through the sky, emanating from the constellation Butes. This meteor shower has a short peak and under dark skies with no moon, can sometimes briefly show up to 100 meteors per hour. But expect a more realistically steady rate of around 10 to 20 meteors per hour, particularly with the last quarter moon rising around 2 a.m., which will wash out many of the fainter meteors. This is a tough meteor shower for many of us this time of year due to the cold weather, but for those of you who enjoy hunting down meteors, January starts off with a pretty good show. Unless you're hunting down deep sky objects or doing astrophotography, everyone loves when the moon is out. It's at this point in our monthly guide that owning some equipment will start to enhance your views of the night sky. A nice pair of 10 by 50 or 15 by 70 binoculars can really begin to reveal some fine lunar details on the surface of the moon that your eye just can't pick up. The new year begins with a last quarter moon on January 3rd, new moon on January 11th, first quarter moon on January 17th, and a full moon on January 25th. The moon also makes some close passes to several objects this month, beginning with Venus on the 8th, Mercury on the 9th, Saturn on the 14th, and Jupiter on the 18th. If you live in the western part of North America, you may be able to see the moon move in front of the star Antares on January 8th, early in the morning, right as the sun is rising. This event is called an occultation, and I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video to a website called In the Sky. It's an excellent resource to help you figure out for this or other events exactly what you can see from where you live anywhere around the world. Just be sure if you're going out in the early morning to look for this that you stay away from the rising sun if you're using a pair of binoculars or a telescope to see it. You'll never forget your first view of a planet through the eyepiece of a telescope. While many of the planets can be viewed with the naked eye and all can be viewed with a pair of binoculars, you're really gonna want a telescope to get that wow factor to study and see the surface details, particularly of the major gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn. What I recommend for those of you who are just getting into this hobby is a six inch Dobsonian telescope if you're really interested in studying the planets. Telescopes all the way down to a 60 millimeter refractor can also be used to see surface details of the major planets of our solar system. This January, Jupiter continues its run of dominating the night sky as it has for the past several months. Go out after sunset and track its moons with a pair of binoculars or study its cloud belts with a telescope. This video of Jupiter was taken with a 6-inch Dobsonian telescope and shows the detail that you can realistically expect to see using a telescope of this size under steady skies. Sadly, after months of enjoying Saturn, it's really low to the horizon right now and you're probably not going to get many good views of it. You can go outside and try to see it in the southwest early this month, but views will only get more difficult throughout the month. Just behind Saturn, we have Neptune in the southwest sky, and just behind Jupiter, you can find Uranus in the south. Switching to the early morning sky, Mercury will be at its highest point in the southeast around January 7th, and above it shines the ever-impressive Venus all throughout the month. 
Comets are one of the things that got me into astronomy in the late 1990s. And they continue to be probably the most exciting thing for people to go out to see or image as these icy remnants travel through the inner parts of our solar system and sometimes grow a tail for us to see in the process. As we get into this portion of our monthly guide, it's important to understand visual magnitude to get an idea of what you can realistically hope to go out to see for these fainter objects. The naked eye under dark skies can see an object around sixth magnitude in brightness. A pair of 10 by 50 binoculars can see around ninth magnitude, and a six inch telescope will show up to about 13th magnitude. This January, we have two main comets for the Northern Hemisphere to look at, and the first is Comet 62P. Your best views of this comet will come in the early morning sky a few hours before sunrise, as it travels from the constellation Leo to the constellation Virgo, probably being around ninth magnitude of brightness. The most impressive comet this month and possibly for all of 2024 is 12P Pons Brooks. Given the nickname the Devil Comet back in 2023 due to some outbursts that it had that made it look like it was growing horns, Comet 12P Pons Brooks is going to be at around 8th magnitude this month, should be a nice target about an hour after sunset as it travels through the constellation Cygnus in the northwest sky. We'll continue to check on this comet each month as it makes its closest approach to Earth this April. So far, everything we've looked at has been within our own solar system. Now let's travel into deep space. I've observed hundreds of deep sky objects with my 8-inch Dobsonian telescope, and even though you can see some incredible deep sky objects with a 6-inch or smaller telescope, an 8-inch telescope is where the sky really starts to open up. My most recent purchase is a 12-inch Dobsonian telescope that I started using late last year. Be sure to subscribe because I'll have a lot more to say about this telescope, including a full review coming up later in 2024. For the month of January, let's begin by going outside around 9 p.m. and looking towards the southeast. Starting with the head, shield, and club, we have the stars of Betelgeuse, Bellatrix, and Mesa. Working your way down Orion, we first come across M78, a bright reflection nebula at a magnitude of 8.3. The famous Orion's Belt is made up of the stars Alnitak, Alnoam, and Mintaka. Near the star Alnitak is where the flame and horsehead nebulas will appear, although those are going to be difficult ones to see through most telescopes. The most popular object in this constellation, however, is located near a collection of stars that is often referred to as the Sword of Orion, and it is the Orion Nebula. This fourth magnitude great nebula comes alive with a pair of binoculars, and switching to a telescope of any size will reveal faint wavy details through the eyepiece. It often appears to my eye as a greenish-gray collection of clouds, with more fine detail being revealed as I move from a 6, 8, and 12-inch telescope. Move up in magnification to see if you can break apart the tight collection of stars known as the trapezium. This collection of double stars is a nice test of the magnification limits and optics of your telescope. For those of you who are into astrophotography, there might not be a better target to start with. This long exposure image that I took a few years ago shows off the beauty and complexity of this region of space. To Alnitak and the Flame and Horsehead Nebulas, to of course the Great Orion Nebula, consisting of M42, M43, and NGC 1975. At roughly 1400 light years, it's one of the closest star forming regions to Earth, and regardless of your equipment, it will be an incredible sight for you to see this January. Those are just some of the most incredible things that you can get out to see in the night sky for January of 2024. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let us know what you hope to get out to see and image in the comment section below. 
Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from Late Night Astronomy.